Hello, class. Franklin Roosevelt is the only president to serve more than two terms. Franklin Roosevelt was born January 30th, 1882. He died April 12th, 1945. He was 63. His home state is New York. And by matter of religion, he was Episcopal. So, um, he is part of an influential political family. And there's a couple of different camps in the family, uh, but his section of the family was from Hyde Park, New York. And so, a lot of times, the first question that kids have when they hear about uh, another President Roosevelt is how is he related to Theodore Roosevelt? And the answer is they're related in two ways. The first is they're fifth cousins, but that's not particularly important. You probably don't know your fifth cousin. Um, however, um, his wife is Eleanor Roosevelt, and Eleanor Roosevelt is the niece of Theodore Roosevelt. So he married the niece of another U.S. president. So Eleanor Roosevelt and uh, Franklin Roosevelt are particularly close related, but they she didn't have to change her name. They have six children, uh, five which get into politics. Several of them are in the House of Representatives. So a big difference that he's going to have than his cousin Theodore is he is going to be a Democrat. So, his term of office is from March 4th, 1933 to April 12th, 1945. Franklin Roosevelt is going to be the only one that breaks the mold here successfully and serves more than two terms. He's actually elected four times, but only a few months into his fourth term, um, he dies. Um, so it's effectively 12 years. The other bit is that they used to start the presidential term on March 4th. This is going to be moved during Roosevelt's term to January 20th. And you just don't notice it because it's in the middle of the term, uh, of his terms. Um, but from now on, presidents will be inaugurated on January 20th. So, Franklin Roosevelt is also the only person to have three vice presidents. So, the first one is John Nance Garner. Okay? So, John Nance Garner is the Speaker of the House. Okay? Um, and for the first ter two terms, he is the vice president for Franklin Roosevelt. Okay? He's from Texas. He is a lot more conservative than Roosevelt. His expectation is that in 1940, Roosevelt will step aside after two terms and he'll be the party's nominee. But Roosevelt breaks that tradition. And so Gardner puts up a bit of a fight at the convention, um, but uh, to make himself, but now he's out. Okay? He is replaced by Henry Wallace who is a much more progressive politician. He is Secretary of Agriculture. Um, he's from Iowa. Um, his dad had been Secretary of Agriculture as well. Um, and he is president during Roosevelt's third term. Roosevelt's going for a fourth term. And a lot of the higher-ups and the party don't like Henry Wallace. Okay, um, and to kind of appease the more Southern contingent, they're going to replace him on the ticket with Missouri Senator Harry S. Truman. Right? Because Missouri has this, you know, threads the needle of being a Southern state and a Midwest state kind of at once. And then... Roosevelt and Truman have barely talked. They've had a couple of conversations. And then Roosevelt dies, making Truman suddenly president. 
All right. So Franklin Roosevelt was born an able-bodied man, but he contracted a disease we don't really have to worry about very much today called polio. And polio paralyzes him. So he was the president in the wheelchair. Uh, and this was a bit of an open secret, but a lot went into hiding this from being constantly in the minds of the public there were ways that Roosevelt could stand that were very painful to him with light braces. He had a car that was designed for him in which he could drive around without having to push the pedals the way that you or I might have to do. And so, um, it's and then the press was very cooperative in this effort not taking pictures and publishing them of him out of that you could never see this today um this this type of agreement um about how a president is covered so franklin roosevelt um tries to follow in the footsteps of his fifth cousin theodore roosevelt and they do it almost identically. So his first big political position is Assistant Secretary of the Navy okay, during the back half of World War I. Okay, Theodore Roosevelt was Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Then, in 1920, he's put on the ticket for Vice President okay, as a running mate. And... Um, they get totally blown out. Okay? Warren Harding wins a landslide election. And most people don't even know that Franklin Roosevelt was a failed running mate. But he's going to have a political comeback by still following the same playbook as his cousin. Okay? Theodore Roosevelt had been Assistant Secretary of the Navy. He had been a running mate on a ticket. But he was also governor of New York. So um, he is elected governor of New York in 1928. He takes office. And then the Great Depression happens, right? which changes the political fortunes in the country as people are turning against Republicans. And Roosevelt is able to get the nomination in 1932. And he is able to beat Herbert Hoover in a landslide. And become president. So, um, I got a lot of similarities between him and his cousin. And so he goes in, and his party has big majorities in both houses of Congress. He won in a landslide. They even pick up seats in their midterm election. So it's seen as having a mandate, and the country lies in ruin economically. So Franklin Roosevelt is going to fundamentally change the relationship between the federal government and the rest of the country. And there's going to be big federal interventions to try to salvage the economy, to try to help people. Right? And so this is known as the New Deal. Right? And so, within the New Deal, he is trying to stabilize the business market. He's trying to get people to work. He's setting up welfare programs. And we can make an entire video on the New Deal. But it's very successful policies being pushed through. And the one that is most prominent today, that's still around, is Social Security. Right? Which is, you know, the retirement plan. Because before then, there, there wasn't a retirement plan. There was no type of pension for elderly people in the United States. You were expected to work until you died, or if that was not possible, you either had to live on the streets or be taken in by a relative. So this sets up Social Security. 
Yeah, and the thing that sets Franklin Roosevelt apart is that after two successful years, t- terms as president, he goes for the third term. Because there was nothing in the Constitution that said you couldn't go for unlimited terms. It was only George Washington's precedent. And you had presidents that had tried to go for a third term out of order. Okay. Grant wanted to go for a third term out of order. Theodore Roosevelt actually got electoral votes running third party going for a third term out of order. But Franklin Roosevelt very convincingly wins a third term. So he helps break that precedent. He goes, um, and that's in 1940. At that point, War has broken out in Europe. World War II is happening, but the United States is neutral. Then, at the end of 1941, there's the attack on Pearl Harbor. The United States enters World War II. So, the two biggest issues that face the United States during the first half of the 1900s, the Great Depression, and World War II are largely done at the helm of Franklin Roosevelt, which is why he stands so set apart amongst modern presidents, uh, as well as the longevity of his term. So the war is ongoing in 1944, so he runs for that fourth term. He's not in good health. And he dies um, before, um, right into this term, which means that Harry Truman has to carry out the rest of that term. And so this somewhat plays into it, is that the nation mourned Roosevelt there's no period of post-presidency. Uh, but as a result, they passed the 22nd Amendment um, that limits the president to two full terms. There are some ways in which you can get basically up to 10 years, but nobody will ever pass Roosevelt's 12-year term. 12 years in office. Now, the biggest blot on Roosevelt's record, okay, occurs during World War II in which he orders the internment of Japanese Americans during the war, and which Japanese Americans are forcibly removed from their homes and put into camps. Now, these are not extermination camps, but they are not treated well while this is occurring. Franklin Roosevelt also has a big impact on the judiciary, okay? You'd had three conservative Republican presidents in a row who have been appointing judges, specifically the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court is striking down a lot of New Deal things. But they start dying during Roosevelt's term. Like, he doesn't get to nominate, a, he doesn't get nominated Supreme Court justice until 1937. Right. Um, but then he's going to, in the next six years, get to put nine justices on the court. Okay. Um, one of which is replacing another person that he he um, put on there. But at that point, the entire court has been nominated by Roosevelt. He is going to put hundreds of other judges on to the courts. So that's going to affect the judiciary, moving it in a less conservative direction for a few decades. So Franklin Roosevelt is someone that deserves a very long video because of all the things they had to do during his time. 
And then since he died in office, he just never had any time to reflect on how it all went. But he stands apart amongst modern presidents in the totality of the things he had to face off and how much he changed the country and the relationship of the federal government and the states in his 12 years in office.